Computer fans of a certain age will see this logo and immediately be hit by a wave of happy memories and nostalgia. The Commodore 64 was introduced in 1982 and it very quickly achieved dominance in the home computer market in most of the world. Notably, not in the UK. It came second to the ZX Spectrum, but I always preferred the 64. Objectively, it was a better computer as it should have been. It cost more than double what the Spectrum did. Now, I never got to own one, but I did have a friend who had one. His was a second generation model or C64C, and this would have been towards the end of the 80s. And he was kind enough to let me borrow it when he went on holidays. It was just huge fun playing with that thing. It's astonishing that the Commodore 64 stayed in production until the mid 90s. You know, sure, there were successor models like the 128 and then the Amiga during that time, but Ultimately, Commodore fumbled their market dominance and, well, that sorry saga is a story for another day, but enter actor and YouTuber Christian Simpson, better known to some as Perifractic. Last year, he managed to acquire the Commodore holding company with the original trademarks and branding. Quite the achievement. And this rejuvenated Commodore is now shipping its first product, a recreation of the original Commodore 64. You can have it in the original beige case and it looks nearly identical to its ancestor. Now this is no cheap imitation with an ARM chip running buggy emulation software. It's a genuine recreation, and that includes the original chips thanks to FPGA. What is an FPGA? Well, that stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and it's basically a computer chip that can be reprogrammed. On board, it has a large number of logic blocks. These contain the logic gates, data storage cells, and other resources that a chip needs. And then there are input-output blocks, which allow the chip to communicate with other chips or other systems. And gluing all of this together is an interconnection matrix, a network of electronic tracks that join logic blocks to input-output blocks. And if all of that is sailing straight over your head, don't worry. Think about it in terms of a set of building blocks, all within one chip, that you can put together to make any integrated circuit you like. In this case, they can be configured to perfectly recreate an actual chip. Now, this isn't a particularly new idea. A company called Xilinx launched the first commercial FPGA back in 1985, but what's changed over the years since then is the sheer number of logic gates on board. Modern FPGAs have millions of them, and that makes it possible to build entire systems on chip, which is exactly what the new owners of Commodore have done with the reissue of the C64. The CPU, custom video and sound chips and more have all been recreated within the FPGA. And this fixes some of the barriers to entry of enjoying these retro systems today. Now, naturally, there is a limited use market of original Commodore 64s. And whilst you have been able to get reproduction cases and some replacement parts, those original custom chips aren't made anymore. And even if you get a nice working example of an original Commodore 64, you're still left with a computer that was designed to connect to contemporary displays and storage media from the 1980s. And these recreations change that. Whilst remaining faithful to the original and almost completely compatible with all games, cartridges, and peripherals, you get modern convenience, like an HDMI port, and the ability to use a USB thumb drive. Now, of course, if you do have an old CRT TV kicking about, you can still plug that in if you want or an old data set or disk drive. It's the best of all worlds, and it means that you can enjoy your retro computer with some modern conveniences. In fact, Commodore have gone to great lengths to make this as close to the original as possible. Everything is there apart from the user port, which is where the modern I.O. sits. But the motherboard itself is completely compatible with the original case and keyboard. You could take it out and install it into an original chassis if you wanted to. And there's also space on the board to install a couple of original SID sound chips, if you have them. Though I should say there are eight SID chips replicated within the FPGA. And whilst there's no point to having eight sound chips if you're running original software, it does open up opportunities for new games and demos. And there are indie developers out there making good games for these systems. What's more, the FPGA can run significantly faster than the original CPU. And that means older games can run more smoothly, and again, newer games and demos can tap into that additional horsepower. Of course, this Commodore 64 is not the only example of retro computers being revived. I've got another one here. Uh, this is a reproduction Atari 2600. 
Now, it's not such a faithful recreation. In fact, this one doesn't use FPGA, it's running software emulation, but the original 2600 had such a weak CPU that really doesn't make any material difference to the playability. But what they have done is try to copy the original design. I mean, it is actually a bit smaller than the original, but it looks the part and it plays all of the old cartridges and you can even use your old joysticks too. It's Perfect for a game of Pitfall or my personal thumb blistering favourite, Decathlon. And I've also got myself a copy of uh, E.T. Now this is uh, what many people believe to be the worst video game ever made. Now it was so bad that Atari in the USA threw the unsold stock into landfill. They literally dug a hole in the ground and buried them. I'm going to make Erin play this. That should be quite amusing and I will release that in a future video. Um, here's another example. This is... Um, something I've featured on the channel before. It's a Game Boy Color, it's not made by Nintendo. And it has a backlit screen and an internal battery. Now, this one is actually a kit that you can build yourself. You can have a look at my review here if you want to see that. Now these are not the only machines on the market, of course. Fans of the ZX Spectrum will no doubt want to check out the ZX Spectrum next. This is more of an evolution than a recreation but the new design was apparently done by the designers of the original ZX Spectrum. And another lovely tribute slash recreation is the 3D by Analog. This is a Nintendo 64 for the modern era, offering full compatibility with original games and peripherals, but with added niceties like wireless controllers. Four-player Mario Kart and GoldenEye death matches are just as fun today as they were in the 90s. And then you've got products like the Mister, which is not designed as a recreation of any specific machine, but you can load different core designs to the FPGA to have it run as an Amiga or an Atari ST. In fact, some of the other products we've mentioned allow you to swap cores too. Want to turn your ZX Spectrum next into a BBC Master? You can do that. For me, I'm just waiting for someone to do a faithful recreation of the Amiga like this Commodore 64. If they did that in a proper original style case, that will be a situation of just take my money. If I'm honest, I have visited the pre-order page for the new C64 quite a few times. Um, I just haven't managed to pull the trigger yet. And I think that's mainly because the C64 wasn't the biggest part of my childhood in computing. I was born in the late 70s and my family didn't have anything like the spare cash needed to buy the Commodore 64. Adjusted for inflation, that original model would be about £1,400 today. So my computing history started with a second-hand Acorn Electron and then a second-hand Amstrad CPC 464 and eventually, after over a year of hard saving, an Amiga 600. I'd love to go back to computing when it was less complicated and more fun, but that's probably the nostalgia talking. And it's probably not solely the computing experience that I'm fondly remembering. Sometimes nostalgia is best left alone because our memory of these things is often better than the actual experience, particularly when you're transposing an experience into a modern world where everything has changed. We've got so many quality of life improvements in technology that we take for granted, like wireless peripherals and being able to transfer files easily between systems. And these things can be pretty awkward on older systems that are being used 40 years out of their natural time and habitat. But these FPGA recreations solve a lot of those issues. And I do wonder, in a world where we are increasingly fatigued with AI interference, these systems may have come at just the right time. Not just for old farts like me hoping to relive their computing youth, but also a whole new generation of players and developers who've got a world of great games and fun to discover. Is there a system that was particularly special to you? Or do you know of a great FPGA system that I haven't mentioned? And what was your favorite computer back in the day? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you again soon for some more Geekery. <laughs>